If those structural panels were also solar panels, you start to get the idea here. Oh my god, massless structural batteries that generate their own power. This is amazing, right? But what if we could take some of that weight out of the equation? Imagine a car that has no battery pack because the car's structure is the pack. Let's explore massless energy storage and how a recent breakthrough could have a dramatic shift in how we store energy in our phones, planes, cars, you name it. Meet Matt Farrell. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. Mr. Amazing, every word of what you just said was wrong. And today he's going to talk to us about no more battery pack, exploring massless, massless energy as a battery breakthrough with 1.5 million hits. Let's see what he's got for us, shall we? A team at Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden has successfully created a battery with carbon fiber as a structural electrode. Now, what this means is a battery that can act as an actual structure for a device. There's no separate battery pack when the structure itself is the pack. Yes, let's take a look at this amazing new breakthrough in their paper, shall we? Crane your necks upwards. You're about to witness the amazing structural battery in all of its non-CTI glory. And if you're wondering why it's all clicky like this, it's because it's actually nickel of blocks. That's uh, usually because you need to keep oxygen out of these things, or maybe it's because it's got lithium in the battery somewhere and you need to keep the nitrogen out, whatever. It's being handled in the glove box because you can't handle it in the air. And that's his amazing structural battery. And I, 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 I say, my God, he managed to light up an LED with his amazing structural battery. Well, that kind of reminds me of the amazing research that I did to make a a battery powered by nothing but salt water a few weeks ago. Wow, look at that. We got two volts out of this thing. If only that were powerful enough to run a light of some sort. And we touch the two together. And look at that. It generates light out of nothing but salt water. That's actually the research. Uh, so what the hell was Matt showing here? Now what this means is a battery that can act as an actual structure for a device. There's no separate battery pack when the structure itself is the pack. And if those structural panels were also solar panels, you start to get the idea here. So this is what their battery looks like from their actual research. What the hell is Matt actually showing us here? Well, if we come to their promo video, we find out that this structural battery is actually just uh, three batteries stuck between two sheets of carbon fiber. I wonder how long it would take me to uh, replicate this uh, breakthrough in the laboratory. Good. So here we have a battery, which we're going to turn into a massless structural battery through hours of diligent research. But first of all, let's just show everyone that the battery works here. So this is a 12 volt guy and it's it's running a 12 volt LED, a little more powerful than the one they had in the video. Just, just, just a little bit more powerful, you know, burn your eye out type thing. But uh, yeah, okay. So we're doing a little more than lighting crappy little LEDs. Now, if only there was some way where you could integrate this battery and make it a massless structural battery using, say, for instance, graphite. Okay, well, let's see how this works out. Amazing! I've done it already! I've made a massless structural battery. Look, the battery has no mass now. It's part of the structure. Okay, let's try seeing if the massless structural battery still works. And it works exactly as before. That's amazing! And if you think this is crazy, that's literally what their promotional video was showing. It was showing a flat pack cell laminated between two pieces of graphite. And that brings us back to the research breakthrough that's taking this to another level. But I think I can improve on their breakthrough. I think I can make a transparent massless battery. So here you go. We have now the world's first transparent massless battery and let's see if that works as well and it works amazingly well the transparent massless battery but a structural battery isn't exactly a new idea oh say it ain't so matt next you'll be telling me this isn't a massless energy battery or a breakthrough 
This breakthrough, though, is different. But to understand why it has so much promise, let's take a quick step back. This concept is widely used in aerospace applications. Not really. Uh, structural massless gasoline or aviation fuel isn't actually a thing. Because weight is a major driving factor. On passenger planes, for example, fuel tanks are usually integrated into the wings. Uh-huh. A structural fuel tank. The thing that actually holds the fuel. So the equivalent would be the uh, structural battery holder, which has kind of been part of the engineering design of almost every device with a battery for the last 50 or so years. Yeah, I think I might not be the only one struggling to see this as a massless energy storage, let alone um, a breakthrough. The tank is a unit within the airframe structure, which explains the pretty obvious name, integral fuel tanks. And the reason for this, of course, is that the fuel has lousy properties for structure. Just kind of like batteries have lousy properties for structure. But come on, tell us all the amazing advantages of having the fuel in the wings like that. Now, it's a fascinating approach that provides several benefits. If there's some kind of ground fire, passengers have evacuation options since the fuel is isolated from the fuselage. It's not like wings are fragile or anything or the first thing to break off in a plane crash. There are lots of benefits to having fuel in the wings. If there's some kind of ground fire, passengers have evacuation options since the fuel is isolated from the fuselage. And if the fuel pumps break or a fault occurs, the engines will still be fed by gravity. In current electric cars, the battery cells add significant weight, require a special pack and structure to protect it from impacts, and in most cases, they aren't used for any load-bearing function in the overall structure. <laughs> for those who missed the uh, awesome in-depth research done by Matt and his team... It's part of the reason why it took me and my team so long to pull this one together. You are not basing your videos on Google searches and YouTube searches. You are... Hmm going back to first sources as often as possible. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, research from uh, Matt Farrell, uh, exploring the massless energy battery breakthrough. And let's see how many citations he's got in all of this. And uh, amongst other things like uh, hot energy storage, liquid metal batteries explained and our future living on water, floating cities, and all sorts of other bullshit. Let's, uh, Matt, Matt Farrell uh, lives in Boston, blah, blah, blah. He explores the sustainability and smart technologies like EVs, solar cells, and smart homes. And through all of this, he has got 13 whole citations to show how well researched it is. It turns out only two of these are actually related to the, the, the carbon battery as one, the massless energy storage. And if we take a look at that, it's some sort of logging website or something. It's just a sort of press release with no comments on it and an actual link to the actual original paper, which we'll come to shortly. And the second citation is Chalmers researchers one step closer to using carbon fiber as a structural battery which turns out to just be a blog on a EV blogging site, which has two whole comments on it. Yes, this revolutionary new technology, which is going to change everything, got two whole comments on it. But curiously, the one thing that Matt doesn't link to is the original paper. You know, why, why go back to original sources? Although I should stress that uh, this figure here that he has is actually from the original paper. So this is the original paper. And it, it, there's some entertaining stuff in here. So let's zoom in on the how they actually make the battery, uh, where there you have your carbon fiber. That's, that's gonna be the structure of your structural battery. And there they are about to seal it into a pouch cell. Bada bing, bada boom, you have a structural battery. Uh, which you can then put in a pouch. But maybe this is the bit where it gets most entertaining, where you might recognize this from earlier in the video, where the uh, battery not connected to circuit and the LED is not lit up. And then when the battery is connected, the LED lights up. But it's the caption to the figure that really takes the biscuit here. Uh, images from video available in supporting information. 
showing the structural battery cell without the pouch bag, lighting an LED inside the glove box while exposed to mechanical load. Let's take a look at that mechanical load that they're exposing their uh, structural battery to again, shall we? Now, I know what you're thinking. There is no way that I could actually create a massless structural battery that would be able to take the massive structural load of being gently prodded by tweezers. Impressive. And still be able to light an LED. Most impressive. But when we dig into it, it's usually like, oh, we're finding these news articles. Well, it's like, what are these news articles referencing? We go to their references and get, kind of get back to the source and read the information from the sources about that are being cited to actually understand it for ourselves and to craft the story around it. So it's like we're not necessarily reporting the reporting. So it's not like second or third hand information. We're trying to go back to the source to find as much as we can to understand it, to communicate it clearly. Okay, Matt, tell us about the other advantages of having fuel in the wings. And if the fuel pumps break or a fault occurs, the engines will still be fed by gravity. No! 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 Gosh, let's see how this goes, shall we? Let's see. Google search uh, fuel pressure jet engine. And our Google search tells us what are the typical pressures for jet fuel injected into the combustion engine of a jet or turboprop. According to Rolls-Royce book, the typical pressure inside a combustion chamber is about 100 to 200 PSI, which is about eh, 10 atmospheres, that sort of thing. So theoretically, you need to overcome that pressure to be able to inject the fuel. Okay, so what's the gravity-fed pressure on a jet engine? Well, the fuel tanks are about, uh, let's go for a meter above the engines. An amount 10 meters of drop like that will produce about one atmosphere of pressure. So you've got about a tenth of an atmosphere of pressure and you need 10 atmospheres of pressure to inject the fuel into the engines. Which means that gravity only gets you about 1% of the pressure you need for fuel injection. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work, Matt. Uh, this is your uh, pilot speaking. We have experienced a total power failure on the plane. But don't worry, Matt Beryl has done the research and has uh, showed us that all the advantages of having the uh, fuel tanks above the engines means that we can actually, in fact, gravity feed the engines. But in the unlikely case that I uh, didn't do a Google search to confirm that was complete bullshit. He's coming right at us! In current electric cars, the battery cells add significant weight, require a special pack and structure to protect it from impacts, and in most cases, they aren't used for any load-bearing function in the overall structure. And you know what? That's not going to change, because batteries are thin film structures. Even the ones that look like cylinders are thin film structures. And if you get those two plates in contact, you can be in a whole world of hurt. And seeing as those plates are typically only separated by a fraction of a millimeter, yeah, there is a very good reason why people don't want to put structural loads on batteries. Yet, with the aim to solve those problems at Tesla's Battery Day event last year, they not only unveiled a new 4680 battery cell, but also a new battery architecture that's built around the new cell, a structural battery. Actually, I think you'll find it's more a structural battery case than a structural battery. Battery. In order to bring this approach to EVs, Tesla decided to build a battery pack that acts as a body structure, linking the front and rear underbody parts. Yeah, that's a structural battery case, not a structural battery. If you were to take all of the batteries out, mechanically, it will basically have the same properties. In this case, there's no separate battery pack because the car's bottom side is the pack. No, the bottom side is the battery case. In this new concept, Tesla isn't using modules. Instead, it's building the entire battery pack 
as the structural platform of the vehicle with the battery cells glued into a sandwich and helping to join the platform as one big unit. They believe that the structural battery can reduce overall vehicle weight by 10% and increase its range by 14%. Yes, Elon Musk believes in a lot of things. Elon Musk said, the battery pack will be a bonded structure with cells providing shear transfer between the steel upper and lower face sheets, eliminating most of the center body parts while providing better torsional rigidity and improved polar moment of inertia. Adding, this is a major breakthrough. And if we learned anything over the last 10 years, is that when Elon Musk says he's made a breakthrough, you gotta take him seriously. But before we come on to this particular revolutionary breakthrough that Elon Musk made, let's remind ourselves of some of his previous breakthroughs. I mean, 10 years ago, Elon Musk thought the Hyperloop was gonna be much easier than people thought. It's like a tube with an air hockey table. It's really, I swear it's not that hard. <laughs> Five years ago, they thought they had a breakthrough that would make trucks cheaper than rail. And that defeats rail um, in a convoy scenario. And a hundred times safer than a human driver. This is, I want to be clear, this is something we can do now. Also five years ago, Elon Musk thought that he discovered the secret to solve soul-destroying traffic. Traffic is soul-destroying. It's like acid on the soul. It's horrible. This is, I think, finally, 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 there's something. Something that I think could solve the goddamn traffic problem. Which five years later on turns out to be a single, slow-moving extra lane of traffic with chauffeur-driven taxis in it. And also about five years ago, Elon Musk thought he would have a million self-driving robo-taxis on the road within a year. Uh, and we expect to have the first operating robo-taxis next year with no one in them next year. And guess how that turned out. And now, five years later on, far from being some great miracle, Tesla full self-driving, according to Tesla's own internal emails, has acknowledged that it will never progress beyond glorified cruise control. And that's with Elon Musk himself saying the only difference between Tesla being worth huge amounts of money or being essentially worth zero, being worthless, is full self-driving. What's that? Tesla's head of AI and autopilot just quit? Uh, might be a sensible time to dump Tesla stock. But of course, Elon Musk would never do something like that. After all, he shared this on Twitter. All the way back in 2013. Forgot to say one thing at Tesla's annual shareholder meeting. Just as my money was the first in, it will be the last out. And Elon Musk is definitely a man of his word. When he says something, he means it. So he would never be looking for absolutely any excuse to dump Tesla stock. Like, say, for instance, buying Twitter, which, to be fair, is like buying cancer. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, but Elon Musk liquidating a load of Tesla stock to buy Twitter was worth it because buying cancer is a better investment than Tesla stock. Oh, no, 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 really. He had to sell loads of Tesla stock to, to pay a tax bill. No, really. I, I, I can't think of any other way other than selling Tesla stock or in one of the most shameless displays ever. Mr. My Money Will Be The Last Out Of Tesla decided that, nah, he was just going to conduct a Twitter poll to see if he should dump a load of Tesla stock. Maybe what he actually meant to say at the annual shareholders meeting was, just as my money was the first in, it will be the last out. But of course, my devotion to this company can be overridden by a Twitter poll. And anyone want to take any bets as to how Elon Musk's amazing breakthrough structural battery, which Matt Farrell was promoting here, anyone want to take a guess how that's going? Oh, choices, choices. Do we go for a Tesla domain with Game changer, watch out for this massless energy battery breakthrough. Or shall we go for Elon Musk just shocked new insane massless battery, massless energy storage by uh, Tesla fans? Let's give that a go, shall we? But recently, scientists have discovered a weightless battery. Recently, scientists have discovered a weightless battery, and its storage capacity 
is unlimited. Speaking of unlimited, our appreciation is unlimited. If you could show your support and subscribe to our channel and ring that bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Tesla believes that the structural battery can reduce overall vehicle weight by 10% and increase the range by 14. Oof, swing and a miss. Turns out the uh, new amazing structural massless battery didn't actually increase the range of the Teslas by 14%, but actually decreased them compared to the old battery pack. They believe that the structural battery can reduce overall vehicle weight by 10% and increase its range by 14%. And that brings us back to the research breakthrough that's taking this to another level. But before I get to that, I'd like to thank Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Yeah, kudos to Matt and uh, Surfshark for sharing all of these um, uh, alternative facts. Now back to that research breakthrough. A team at Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden has successfully used carbon fiber as a structural electrode. For several years, they've been studying the relationship between carbon fiber's microstructure and electrochemical capacity. Their structural battery contains a multifunction carbon fiber that works as a conductor, electrode, and load-bearing material. But what Matt doesn't tell you here is what you're looking at there is basically just three pout cells sat between sheets of graphite. It's no different than this. This latest advancement may lead to essentially a massless energy storage in vehicles and other mobile technologies. Since 2007, the scientists have been attempting to develop a truly structural battery but it's been challenging to produce batteries that have both an outstanding mechanical and electrical properties. Yes, that's because large, very fragile, thin film structures are supremely poorly suited for mechanical roles. But now the Chalmers University team, in association with the KTH Royal Institute of Technology that's based in Stockholm, have taken a big step forward. The new battery has properties that go beyond anything that's been seen for strength, stiffness, and excellent potential to chemically store electrical energy. According to the researchers, the performance of this battery is 10 times more than the previous versions of the structural batteries. But there's something important to note about its energy density. It's only at 24 watt hours per kilogram, which they acknowledge is around 20% of the capacity of comparable lithium ion batteries available today. Outstanding, so this is a lithium ion battery which weighs uh, about uh, 180 grams, let's call it 200. So as long as my structural battery weighs less than a kilo, it will be a better structural battery than this revolutionary breakthrough. And my actual structural battery weighs... Oh my God, I've done it. I've made something that has almost twice the energy density of the world's best structural battery. While that may sound like a drawback at first, less energy will be required to drive an electric vehicle since the vehicle's weight can be significantly reduced. You could have panels of a car that are the battery. And while the Chalmers battery, which is still in the research phase, doesn't have the same energy density, at some point you could potentially offload a lot of that energy storage capacity to the structure. And this is just a hard no on every level. I mean, firstly, batteries are thin film structures. And if those two plates touch each other, the bet, you know, like someone slaps your car or something, the best case scenario is you don't get any volts out of it because you've shorted the battery. And of course, you're not going to be able to make these things in anything other than flat plate film configurations because of the cost and difficulty of manufacture. And even if you could do that, you've now got the attachment problem. Only one of your electrodes is made out of carbon fiber. And obviously you can't attach both electrodes to the uh, frame because otherwise you'll short circuit the battery. So now how are you going to attach those electrodes to the surface of your structure when you can't have air get into your battery? Yeah, it's a very good reason why all these things are handled in glove boxes or laminated in plaster. It's to keep the air out because the air will kill these things. And no one's given any more thought to that, uh, then, you know, why don't we make all of our cars out of carbon fiber? Because it's too damn expensive and it isn't likely to get cheaper anytime soon. And we don't necessarily need the same 300 plus watt hours per kilogram that Tesla has today. But if we get close enough, along with high enough voltages, with the weight savings, it could make it a viable option. 
Sorry, the way you use voltages is there suggests that you don't understand that the voltage that you get out of a cell is just a, a property of the electrochemistry. But something remarkable happens when you add a bit of salt water that all of a sudden you get about half, half a volt of, of potential. But I want a little bit more than a half a volt. I can't run a light of half a volt. I'm going to need more of these things. do is add a little bit of water to each one of these cells and wow look at that we got two volts out of this thing if only that were powerful enough to run a light of some sort and we touch the two together and look at that, it generates light out of nothing but salt water. And it may surprise precisely no one that this is exactly how batteries are put together these days. So this 12 volt uh, battery here is actually a combination of three cells. And I've got one here which I've taken apart because one of the cells failed. So here's two cells. And the, so if you hook them all together in series, you get 12 volts out of that one. And when you charge the cells, you have to charge the cells individually. So one of these, the black wire, would connect to all the negative terminals of all of the cells. And then you use the black and the white to charge cell 1, the black and the yellow to charge cell 2, and the black and the red to charge cell 3. So obviously that one's been taken apart. That's got all of the cells present. And... <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it's everything, right? So car batteries, I forget what they are. They're like six cells or something. Yeah, this isn't some amazing thing where they'll have to do some super research and development to get more volts out of the battery. This has been known for some time. But if we get close enough, along with high enough voltages, with the weight savings? In addition, the new carbon fibers battery's design has an increased stiffness of 25 gigapascals, which is similar to many construction materials, and a tensile strength exceeding 300 megapascals, which gives it excellent rigidity. Now, in order to understand why everything Matt just said was wrong there, you've got to understand a few things, like what they actually did in this paper. So, first of all, that isn't the uh, structural battery that we're talking about here. This is the structural battery we're talking about. Secondly, in order to measure those mechanical properties. They didn't just get the battery and bolt it in and sort of measure how rigid it was. They had to chop the battery up into little pieces, bolt it between a mechanical thing that would stretch it and measure its stretchability. And surprise, surprise, they found that its uh, properties were basically those of carbon fiber. But those aren't the properties of the actual structural battery. Those are just the properties of the structure. There were no tests done where they actually applied those sorts of forces to the battery to see if it would work afterwards. Which is not quite what Matt says here. In addition, the new carbon fibers battery's design has an increased stiffness of 25 gigapascals, which is similar to many construction materials, and a tensile strength exceeding 300 megapascals, which gives it excellent rigidity. The higher the stiffness, the less likely something is to undergo elastic deformation which means how something deforms non-permanently. It'll go back to the way it was. Yes, it's almost like someone's just measured the properties of carbon fiber. Breakthrough, Matt. Truly revolutionary. The new structural battery features a positive electrode composed of lithium iron phosphate coated in aluminum foil and a negative electrode made of carbon fiber. These electrodes are separated by a fiberglass fabric and a matrix electrolyte. So... Their breakthrough is basically a regular thin film cell where one of the electrodes is graphite. Let's consider a possible application of the 24 watt hour per kilogram battery in the Solar Electra 1 electric airplane that was introduced in 2012. The plane was one third structure, one third batteries, and one third payload, including the pilot. Each third was around 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. Being able to replace half the structure with Chalmers structural battery material. You mean you want to make a plane out of this. 50 kilograms or about 110 pounds of the airframe would be capable of storing about 1200 watt hours. Yeah, glossy over the minor stuff like you can't make cells that shape or the cost would be prohibitive or the heat cycling on a battery on the surface like that would shorten its life like crazy. 
All hell just flying up to altitude where the air is cold would give the battery a sluggish performance. And of course, any minor bump would short circuit the cells, which if you're lucky, would just result in a loss of power. Okay, so those are all the problems. Tell us what amazing benefits we're gonna get from this structural mass-free battery. Shaving 4.6 kilograms or about 10.1 pounds from the battery weight. Although it doesn't sound like a big number, reducing 1.5% of the total weight can make a big difference. Seriously, all of those problems and the only benefit that you get out of it is it's maybe 1.5% lighter. I think you'd have been better off going with, well, if the power drops out, we can gravity feed the engines. And if those structural panels were also solar panels, you start to get the idea here. Oh yeah, I do, Matt, that you don't have the slightest clue about what you're talking about. But I think I see where you're going with this. Well, what if you didn't just put solar panels on them? Not just lifeless, boring solar panels. Smart, microprocessing, interlocking, hexagonal solar units. I think you can see where this is going. Smart solar panels with LEDs on them. Every panel has a series of LED lights on the circuit board that can be programmed to make landscape designs, warning signs, parking lot configurations, whatever. Imagine a highway road lighting up ahead of you. How much safer it would be to drive at night. Such so that they could make display panels out of them. Solar freaking roadways. What are they? They're solar freaking roadway. And they had Wi-Fi chips in them so that they could communicate with each other and tell each other when they were damaged. Just imagine electric bikes, EVs, and portable devices being powered by massless structural batteries just like that. If they can deliver, there's a huge amount of potential. And they could be heated smart solar panels such that they could melt snow when it snows. I mean, wouldn't that be incredible? You start to get the idea here. Meanwhile, if we're being honest here, Matt is wrong about almost everything. The amazing breakthrough he keeps going on about. And that brings us back to the research breakthrough that's taking this to another level. This breakthrough though is different, but to understand why it has so much promise it is little more than a tiny incremental development in a routine mundane research paper. And his bizarre claims about how putting shielding on a battery somehow makes it a massless structural battery but there's also the possible downside to structural batteries, and something I'm sure a lot of you are thinking about and possibly commenting on already. What if the structural pack or battery is damaged in some way, like during a collision? Come on, Matt, one more chance to win that amazing every word of what you just said was wrong prize. But also how the structural battery packs could help keep, if not improve, the vehicle's safety. According to the patent, the bottom of the battery pack could be manufactured with a strong and rigid material that would also intentionally deform if it was involved in a crash. Uh -huh. So this amazing massless entity breakthrough that we're looking at consists of a regular battery pack with a piece of shielding bolted underneath it. It's just kind of weird. I mean, by that definition, if I put some shielding on a gas tank, I guess that makes it massless structural gasoline. Well, that's just a fraction of the bullshit surrounding the earth. Massless structural battery. But it's basically solar roadways on steroids. It's just worse at generating electricity than regular solar panels, worse at being a road than a regular road, and costs a hundred times more than the solar panels plus the roads combined. But let me know what you think. Do you want to see more videos debunking Matt Ferrell here? Or maybe something else? If you like the video, a thumbs up would be great. And subscribing is always a good option if you don't want to miss out on debunking videos like this one. And of course, as ever, if you really want to support someone who actually debunks this popular bullshit, you can do it directly through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.